right? We are live. What is going on? It's been a minute. It's been a minute since I've been able to go live. I've been a little busy making videos. I've been on some road trips, but we're here now. So I hope um, your English will be better later, one hour from now, because you'll be hearing a native English speaker speak. I will be answering your questions. That's the goal. Get your English to be a little bit better than it was when you first started watching. So towards the end, Jamie, my wife, and uh, some people are already saying hi to Jamie. Yeah, when she will be here, she's not home right now, um, but she has a, well, there's a new addition to our family. If you are a member, you've already seen this new addition. I think on Instagram, he was on Instagram there too, but um, we have we have a new addition, not a baby, not a baby, but Patty from France is here. Ooh, she's got a kitty, kitty in her profile picture. Anya is here. Anya and I have been speaking on Discord. She knows, she knows the surprise, probably not much of a surprise, but Angelo, how are you? Yeah, it feels good. It feels good to be back here. Um, hopefully I can do this again next Saturday because I love, I love going live. It's a lot of fun. And Angelo lives in Cutter. And earlier this morning, I was busy getting ready for the live stream, but I saw a, a soccer, soccer game. The U.S. was playing Cutter. I think it was tied, tied. So Snazzy's here. Welcome. Hey, before we get too far, if you're watching on replay, I want to welcome you. If you're watching live, well, hello. And if you're watching on the podcast, that would be impossible because you can't watch on a podcast. But if you're listening on a podcast, then, then you know, oh, semiconductor, maybe you saw on Instagram. Yeah. The, the cat is out of the bag. That's an idiom we use when there's a secret that has been revealed. Yeah, the cat is out of the bag. Jamie will be bringing a dog on later. I see a woo. How are you? What? Is that an Italian flag, Alexandria? Well, welcome. Or, oppure benvenuto. Oppure benvenuta. Welcome. So I do see a question. That's the way this works, right? You ask questions. I do my best to answer them. Hopefully I get them right. But either way, you are getting more English into your brain because you are listening to a native English speaker speak, hopefully clearly, and at a good pace for you. So IL says, hi guys. Hi, Brent and Jamie. I have a question. Would you use the words belabored and commonality? Sure. Sure. When we use belabored, if you look in the middle of that, there's labor in there. So when you hear labor, think of work. Um, let's say I was climbing a mountain. Belabored. My breathing would be labored, meaning I have to work harder. Belabored. Belabored. I believe that is when you I mean, I'm, I'm looking this up right now. Look at this. The first, the first question we have, and it's a difficult one. All right. So it looks like, you know, but the good thing is I can share the screen. Let me share the screen and we can all look at the definition together for belabored. Um, let's see here. Can you see it now? Okay. Google. We're using Google. Google cannot be wrong, can it? I don't, Google is not wrong. So here we have um, belabor to argue or elaborate a subject in excessive detail. Okay, that probably helps absolutely nobody. That definition is so difficult, but a lot of times what you'll hear, let me write this down. Um, you will hear this phrase. And change that right there. Belabored. That's the way we spell it in the United States. But the way VI spelled it is how you might see that in 
IL, sorry. That's how you might see it in England. Belabored the point. It's very common. Belabored the point. And that means when two people are talking and there's a little bit of an argument or a disagreement, belaboring the point, it means like you can actually stop talking. You don't have to beat a dead horse. You might hear that sometimes belaboring the point and beating a dead horse are very similar. And that is when you are explaining something and it just doesn't need to be done anymore. So I'm hoping that you understand what belabored means, but I hope I'm not talking too much about belaboring. I'm hoping you are all saying, okay, I, I know what it means. You can move on. You don't have to beat a dead horse. Okay. I'm going to try not to beat a dead horse. What was the other one? It's another one. Oh, a commonality. So, um, when we use common often that is, um, being used as an adjective. So what do they have in common? What do they have in common? Um, it's describing how they feel with one another. Maybe they both like movies. So they have that in common. A commonality between the two of them would be that they like movies. I L that's a, that's a very difficult uh, question there. I hope I did well. Um, those two words are not all that common in English, but if you're in an advanced level, you might hear them commonality, but that, that is a noun, a commonality. All right. Yeah. Semiconductor knows that it is a dog. It is a dog. What? Um, yeah. Yawin, please leave in the comments, whatever you want to know about Hank the tank. Yeah. He is our new puppy. Um, I did a members video. We were on the road. If you would like to become a member, join the discord. There's a link up there. We talk all the time, uh, members videos, but yeah, we were on the road. We had to travel up to almost Canada, 15 minutes from the Canadian border. But later this week, there will be a lesson from the Canadian border. Another spoiler alert. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. I was not able to cross into Canada. I did see a few cars crossing into Canada. Some people were crossing into Canada. But what happens is people who live on the border, they might live in Canada but work in the United States. So if it's for work, the border is open. If it's for goods going across the border, the border is open. Tourists, which is what I would be, a tourist, no, no. Can't cross, sir. Elena, good to see you in here. Mega, Mega's in here. Hope all is well in India. All right, this is a good question right here. Good question. What's the difference between jail, prison, penitentiary? Well, they all have one thing in common, and that is I do not ever want to go to any of them. Penitentiary, that's a fancy word for probably prison, probably prison. And we'll talk about what jail and prison, the difference is. But um, a penitentiary is just more of a general, this person did something wrong and they are being held in a cell. Usually we have like a jail cell or a prison cell. Cell is spelled like this. A jail cell or a prison cell. But there is a big difference between jail and prison. And let's talk about that. Hey, Ibrahim is here from Egypt. So let's talk about the difference between jail and prison. Jail is often not as bad as prison. Okay. Prison, most people go there for a long time. They might go there for life. They might go there for 10 years. Jail is usually 
the crime is not as bad and they will not be there as long. Okay. And that is the way we spell jail. They spell it a little bit differently in England starts with a G. I don't remember exactly how, but yeah. So I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Danny, Danny's here from France. Hopefully uh, everything is well in France. What's this, Ario? Ario is here from Indonesia. Welcome. Mm, I don't see what. I don't see her. Jojoba, how are you? Welcome. Oh, no, Anya. Anya is very busy as well, but uh, it looks like she has to leave. Maybe she's still here. Maybe she'll watch on replay, but I hope you're doing well, Anya. All right. Um, Ario would like a little bit of a definition on dead horse. Um, all right. Let's say Jamie and I were having an argument. My wife and I, we were having an argument. What could we argue about? Let's say, mm, let's say uh, uh, something, something dumb. How about where to go to eat? I use this a lot as a definition. Maybe I want Italian food and maybe she wants Mexican food and we're having an argument. Well, I want, I want Chinese food. Wait, wait, I want Mexican food. I want Italian food and maybe I win. Maybe I get my way. I get my Italian. We go to one of the best Italian restaurants in the world, Olive Garden. Just kidding. Sorry to anyone who is Italian. Bad Italian food. But let's say we go to we go to Olive Garden. I get my way. And if I say, "Oh, sorry. You you didn't get your you didn't get your way, did you? You didn't get your way." And I rub it in. You know, that might be beating a dead horse. Anytime you are telling a person something they don't want to hear over and over, or you're explaining something way too much. That's, that's beating a dead horse. Like, okay, enough. You don't have to keep talking. You're beating a dead horse where Jamie will be here. She will be here toward the end. Ibrahim, what am, am I not enough? Am I not enough? Yeah, ja I know Jamie, uh, is more popular than I am. And uh, she will be here. She's out working, actually. Um, but she should be here towards the end at about 10 o'clock. Yeah, this is a great question, Elena. Low key. Um, it's definitely become slang here. Um, is there a synonym? Um, maybe down low. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. Uh, I don't know if you can use it that's a little bit older too on the down low. Let's keep that on the down low. Um, so a lot of times a love, Oh, Sita loves Olive Garden. Well, Aroni, he is not here right now, but we often, uh, Luciano, how are you? We often, um, bad mouth. We often bad mouth. I'm all over the place. Come on. I gotta, I gotta focus here. We often bad mouth the Olive Garden, because uh, it's not real Italian food. But all right, I don't know if Linda's here or not, but uh, it's not good. All right, let me focus here. Focus, focus, low key. All right, that means when something is not obvious. That's not obvious. It's low key. So maybe you could use not obvious. Um, but a lot of times we'll say like, that was a, a low key brag or a humble brag. If someone is saying good things about themselves, like maybe somebody just got a new car and it's like a beautiful new car. Maybe they got a Tesla. Is that a good car? Maybe they got a Tesla and they might just kind of brag kind of low key. Hey, I got a new car yesterday as Tesla. It's, it's better than your car. I think that would be a humble brag. That would be bragging like kind of low key. Like just, you didn't have to say that. So low key, it means not obvious, subtle. What's up? You know, I hate the way subtle. Look at this. How do, this is how we spell subtle. This is why people can't spell in English, including myself. Subtle. It has a B in it. Why? 
subtle, low key and subtle. I think you can uh, use that most times right there. Hey, Hiroki's here. Welcome. Hey, have I watched the 2020 Olympic Games? Ooh, hey, I did not make a lesson on the Olympic Games, but if you check out the channel, Bob the Canadian, he did a lesson last week and it is great. I watched the whole thing. Um, even though yesterday he did a lesson on something and said he didn't know much about the Olympic Games, I thought it was a fantastic lesson. So check out Bob the Canadian. He did a great lesson on that. While I'm plugging other channels, English Arts Academy with Karis, I will be live on that channel tomorrow. There is a link in the description for that. Check it out. Check it out. Okay. Okay. Yawin. Yes. Why did we have to go to the border of Canada? Almost a five hour drive away from our house to get Hank. So Hank is a kind of a special breed. Um, I just sniffed for a reason. I have allergies and I didn't want a dog, but I had allergies. So my wife and kids tried to get a dog that was kind of small, wouldn't shed a lot and would be hypoallergenic. That means people who have allergies like myself would not be allergic to this dog. So he's kind of a special breed and the breed is what we use when we talk about types of dogs. So he is a special breed that is hypoallergenic. Some big, some big English words there, right? But when you see him, I mean, this guy's adorable, I think. Germany. Germany is in the house. Um, the other question, though, was have I watched the games? I have a little bit. I watched, um, sorry, if anyone is watching from the Netherlands, but yesterday, my son and I, we watched soccer. You may call it football, but the U.S. women's team was playing the Netherlands. And they went to penalty kicks and somehow the U S women won somehow. I don't know how. And, um, somebody shared in the, the discord server, um, about a 13 year old skateboarder. I think she was from Japan. She won the gold medal. That's insane. That's awesome. Uh, good question. Fabio. Good question or good suggestion. Um, I would like to read a book in English. I know you like reading Stephen King books. And so do I. Which of his books would you recommend to me? Um, man, I can't get up right now. But um, in the past, I have recommended two books. I am trying to read them in Italian right now, but it's taking me a long time. I'm reading some other things in Italian, but... I would say one is The Long Walk. Now, a great thing about this Stephen King book is that it's not too long. It's not too long. Um, maybe 250 pages. And when we are talking Stephen King, that's kind of short. Um, and there will be a movie coming out um, about The Long Walk. Another one that I really like is The Green Mile. So I don't think these are very easy at all, but I know that your level is pretty high in English. So I would think that you could, you know, maybe struggle a little bit, but you could get through it. Uh, my friend there, Aroni, um, he read The Long Walk and he liked it. It takes place in the 1970s, but, uh, Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. What? Angelo. The Philippines? The first gold since... Oh, the first gold in the 96 years of the Olympics. Congratulations. Go Philippines. Nicely done. Um. Okay, great. Shea, this is great. Yes, you can't... Oh, no. Okay. 
can I say, I low key like this dress. It actually means you like it, but you don't want too many other people to know that. Maybe you feel good when you wear it. Maybe you think it looks good on you, but you don't want to brag in that way. You, you might say to yourself, like, I, I low key like this dress. Or you might say it to a really close friend, like, I low key like this dress. I think it looks good on me. Yeah. So that it's kind of the opposite. You just, you say you like it, but you don't want other people to know you like it. Yeah. Or maybe there's a car that you really like, but you can't afford. So you don't want to tell a lot of people you like it. You just might tell a good friend, man, I low key like that car. Mm, I wish I could afford it. Wish I could afford it. Yeah. Karis is great. Um, that's why I wanted to do a collab with her. Um, I'm very picky about who I do collabs with. I don't, I have been asked by other teachers and when I watch their stuff, I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't know if, you know, I don't want to ever steer you in the wrong direction. So anytime you see another teacher on this channel, it means I think they would be a good fit for you. Um, it means I think what they present is good. And I think Karis is one of the good ones out there. She's very good. So if you aren't following English Arts Academy with Karis, you should. She's great. So I'm, you know, American English. She's British. And tomorrow we're going to talk about some different slang words in the U.S., um, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about how I became a teacher, stuff like that. Okay. Ibrahim. I know Ibrahim. Ibrahim, uh, was one of my first subscribers way back in the day. So yeah. Yeah. Jamie will be here. Jamie will be here. I was just messing with you. Just giving you a hard time looking through. I, if I, if I missed a question, um, please put it in again. Thank you for not spamming. Um, I don't think we have any moderators here, so it's just me. If you spam, you would make my life more difficult. And thank you for not spamming. All right. The next one, Loki. Yes. Yes. So if anybody is watching the Disney series, it might be done now, but Loki it's, it's really close. Like it's pretty much the same low key, low key. So the O might be longer for low key, not the person, but it's like, yeah, pretty much the same, pretty much the same grammar question. Oh, no, never mind. Grammar. No way. Okay. Hang on. Let me look grammar. Maybe. Okay. We'll, we'll do a little grammar. Most people get tired when I talk about grammar. They click off. Bye-bye. Okay, here we go. Marciposa, 50. A grammar question. When do you use have to and when do you use must? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, in the United States, might be different in England. I think it is. But if you say, let's talk about cleaning. You, you probably hate cleaning, right? If anybody here in the chat loves cleaning, can you just put that? Hey, I love cleaning. I, I don't think many people love cleaning unless you're Monica from friends. Let's use that as an example. I have to clean my room today. It's like, yeah, I, I, I should. I probably will clean my room. Should. That's I did a lesson on that last year. I need to do another on should. So I have to clean my room today. It means, you know, I, I should do it. I probably will do it. I must clean my room today. It's a little bit more urgent. It's a little bit more important when you say I must, I must do something. Most of the time in the United States, you'll hear have to. And you know what? We don't say have to, we say have to, have to, I have to clean my room. I have to clean my room. But if I say I must, it's a little bit more important. 
Hope that helps. Great question. Great question. All right, here we go. Sita, Sita, question, please. Teach me how to use the expression colors and shades in some sentences. I'll do shadowing with your examples. Oh, no. I don't think we have the expression colors and shades. And the way that is written, that's actually British too. So I'm not sure if that is um, a British expression, but I can explain what colors and shades are in English, but I don't think we have the expression colors and shades, not in American English. But let's talk about what a color is. And I'm kind of colorblind, but let me take my, uh, my stream yard mug here. All right. So clearly that's yellow, right? And that's green. I think I'm pretty sure. But if you look, if you look around his eyes, that's a different shade of green. So the duck, his head, it's green but you can see there's a lighter shade of green around his eyes. So we will use colors more broadly, like that's green, but a shade would be a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. Okay. So I hope that, I hope that helps. If, if not, let me explain it again. But, um, a color, there's a bigger difference with color than shade. So we say green, but shades will be just a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. Yeah, Mega. Yeah, my kid's wish is fulfilled of having a dog, and I hope they like that dog. You know, my worry is they get the dog. We've had the dog for two days. Oh, they love the dog now. But in two weeks, in two months, are they going to still love the dog or is it me that's taking the dog out when it needs to use the bathroom? Oh, dad will do it. They love the dog now. They love the dog now. All right, Luciano. Welcome, my friend. What's the difference between blackout and to give up? It's a great question. Great question. Um, there is a difference. There is a difference. So uh, I hope you, you know, I don't, well, do what you want, but if you drink a lot, and I'm talking about alcoholic drinks, if you drink a lot and you get so drunk that you pass out, and what I mean by that is you go to sleep and you can't be woken up, that's you're passed out. But we might also say you're blackout drunk, blackout drunk. When you blackout, it means you lose consciousness. It's a big word there, but you're not awake anymore. I think I did um, a, a, a lesson on blackout and pass out. So blackout, it means you're just, you're sleeping and you can't be woken up. You're not dead, but maybe you, um, a friend of mine has a condition where every couple of years she will just black out. And the doctors don't know why. Luckily, it has never happened while she's been driving, but she'll just black out. And then she'll wake up and, and she won't know what happened. Now, give up, it means when you stop doing something. Now, I hope you never give up on learning English. And I know a lot of you, I see Angelo, Sita, Mega, I've talked to them you know, on chats before with video. I know they will never give up. They have been learning for a long time. Their English is very good. But when you give up, it means you stop doing it. So I hope to never give up these live streams. I want to keep doing them until we're all here. Okay, that's the plan. We'll keep doing live streams. All right, what happened? Brazil won the silver medal on skateboarding. All right, nice. Yeah, those skateboarders... They all seem to be very young. I don't think a guy like me at 45 could skateboard, but there is an American guy. What's his name? One of the early skateboarders. I think he's my age. He's still crushing it. He's still doing well. He doesn't compete, but he's doing well. What's his name? The skateboarder guy. I can't really remember. 
All right, Marcy Poza says the long walk is great. You read it in English. Wow, your English level must be really high. So anyone that reads the long walk, just remember it takes place during the 1970s. So there will be a lot of older United States slang, but great book. If you are familiar with the Hunger Games, it's like the early Hunger Games. I don't want to spoil what happens, but yeah, so never more. What about the novel, the 1984 novel? It's good. Yeah, um man, Orwell, right? Um what's his first name? George Orwell. George Orwell wrote 1984. Yes. That is a novel that a lot of people in high school still read today, and it is supposed to take place in the future. I think it was written in the 1950s. So 1984 was in the future for when this was written. So maybe think about 2084, like that's the real year, but an amazing book, still important today. It talks about big brother, big brother, how I'm not talking about the TV show. Hey, Adriana's here. Maria is here. Welcome. Poland and Argentina are represented. Um, 1984 talks about how Big Brother might always be listening to us, might always be watching us. So Big Brother might be the government or it might be our phones. Um, I recently got a dog. I've been talking about dog stuff dog toys, dog food. And guess what? Suddenly on my phone, I'm getting ads about dog food. I think big brother's listening to me. So yeah, 1984 is a great book. 1984 is a great book. Whoa, sunshine's here. Hey, Armenia. Hope all is well in Armenia. All right. I am looking through the questions here. Give me a second, Adriana. Welcome. Wait, what? Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Adriana's coming in early here. Um, coming in hot. If I'm not wrong, the book Fifty Shades of Grey, right? I think it was a really bad movie. I know that um, it was popular with some women, maybe some guys too, but I remember uh, 10 years ago, 50 shades of gray was a very popular. Yeah. Good color. I mean, good call. Sorry. Katrina, there are base colors. Yes. Excellent. Look, take a look at Katrina's quote because it's perfect. Think of the colors of the rainbow. We might call those the base colors. You got your orange, you got your yellow, you got your green. And then there's little shades in between little shades in between. All right, let's see. Hiroki, Brent, I talked to an African woman from South Africa in English on this Wednesday. I was anxious whilst speaking to her. Nevertheless, I made my efforts to speak clear and louder. Hiroki, that is so important. Nicely done. And I keep saying I want to do um, a lesson on how to find a language partner. And it looks like Hiroki found one, which is great in South Africa. There is a slightly different accent between South African English and American English, but we can all understand each other. So yeah, awesome. If you've ever heard Elon Musk talk in English, he has a South African accent. My favorite band Dave Matthews band, the lead singer, Dave Matthews. He is from South Africa. So very similar English and awesome. And Hiroki, um, her native language is Japanese. There are a lot of English speakers who would like to learn Japanese. So finding a language partner, if your native language is Japanese, would be easier than if your native language was Armenian. Let's use sunshine as an example. You know, not as many speakers 
are looking to learn Armenian. It's a smaller language. So depending on what your native language is, it might be harder for you. Hey, chill. You're not late. It's all right. We're, we're about halfway through. We're about halfway through. Brent, we Japanese Olympic players will win gold medals to show you that we can make it. Yes. Hey, Japan is doing a great job hosting the Olympics. I think they are doing a fantastic job. I see Mio is here. So if you are watching from Japan, you should be very proud of your country. Well done. Well done. Yeah, Katrina. Hey, thanks. Katrina is helping me out. Must. It's almost like a rule. Yeah, it's like, it's, I must do my homework today. I need to finish my project. I have to finish my project. Must? It's a little higher, a little higher. Angelo says he loves grammar. Good. Glad. Glad. All right. Oh, no. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, in the United States, um, I don't think it is illegal to record the police. It's not illegal to record anybody in public. Um, under 18, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, in my video yesterday with the roller coaster ride, like I taught an English lesson on a roller coaster. It wasn't easy. And when I flashed to the front, flashed means very quickly. When I flashed to the front of the roller coaster, there were kids in there for like a minute, like, well, like a second or so. Um, but if a person under 18 was being recorded on my video or on my lesson, and they were the main part of the video, it gets a little tricky when they're under 18. But in public, in the United States, you can pretty much record anybody. And if they're over 18, no problem. It gets tricky when you go into a private place, like a 7-Eleven. Yes, 7-Eleven, it's a public store, but it's owned by other people. So they might say, you can't record here, which they did. Um, semiconductor devices. Why many Americans keep camera recordings in their cars? I've whacked a guy arguing with a policeman and the police recognized that they were being recorded. Yeah. So, I mean, that might be just a little bit of, um, security for them so that there is some evidence. If the police got too rough with them, they could say, Hey, you're being recorded right now. And you do not have to tell people that they're being recorded in public. If I was talking on the phone with a friend and I wanted to record our conversation, I would have to let them know because when you're on the phone, you are thinking that is private. So there are strange rules in the United States about recording, but. All right, let me skip down. I am going to work my way through. Oh yeah, Sunshine says that about Armenian. Yeah, it's just a, a smaller language. You know, Greek would be a smaller language, Albanian. But if you are a Spanish speaker, if you are a French speaker, if you are a Japanese speaker, if you are a Chinese speaker, like Cantonese, probably going to be easier. Portuguese maybe too. Portuguese. Ah, Miho. What's the difference between stoic and strict? Ah, great question. So if somebody is stoic, it means they don't show a lot of emotion. And maybe they are wise. Often when I hear stoic, I think of wise. So an older person who doesn't talk a lot, but is smart, could be described as a stoic person. Now strict, that means they follow the rules. So if I was a strict teacher, and I think I am a pretty strict teacher, we want people following the rules, strict. I want people to be safe in my classroom. So I might be a little strict. 
I can, I think I can have some fun too, but strict means f- they want people to follow the rules and then stoic, a little quieter, but wise. Hope that helps. Um, that's a great question. Sunshine nomad and migrant, which is more common to use, right? So both words mean someone who moves around a lot, someone who moves around a lot. The difference is a migrant is probably working. We often have the term migrant worker. And what a migrant worker does is they move around the country and whichever vegetable is ready to be picked, they are in that part of the country. So maybe they are in my state of Maine right now because, or soon, apples need to be picked. But maybe when it's winter here, they will move to work in California where there will be vegetables to pick there. A nomad doesn't really have a purpose. It's just a person who wanders, probably not working, probably doesn't know where they're going. I mean, not always, but that's the main difference. In the United States, you will hear migrant way more often. Migrant. All right. Okay. Ooh. Alan, welcome. Welcome. Hello, Mr. Brent. Could you tell me the difference between compliment? It's compliment, right? Compliment, pleasantries, and courtesy. Well, all of them are really, really nice. Okay. All of them are really, really nice. So if you pay somebody a compliment, right? It means you say a nice thing about them. And we often use that verb, pay someone a compliment. Oh, that dress looks really nice on you today. I am paying that person a compliment. Often you will exchange pleasantries. Exchange pleasantries. If you exchange pleasantries with someone, just means you say nice things back and forth to each other. Oh, hey, how are you? How have you been? Oh, I've been doing really well. So when you first meet someone after a long time, maybe you haven't seen this friend in a while, you might exchange pleasantries right when you see each other. And then courtesy, that's just another way to be polite. Okay. You might extend a courtesy to somebody. So maybe you open the door for another person. You let them go ahead of you. Americans do that all of the time. You know, if I'm not in a hurry and I think somebody might be working, but we're both going into 7-Eleven, I might say, oh, after you, after you. And that would just be a a courtesy. I would uh, extend a courtesy to them. So they're all very close, aren't they? They're all very close. And I think they are all nouns. So I was going to try to say, well, one's maybe one's a verb, but I think they're all nouns. Wait, Minty. Are you serious? Big brother? Are they watching right now? I need to be careful what I say then. Anita, how are you? Welcome. Looking through the chat. Nice to see Tony Hawk. Alina, thank you so much. Tony Hawk is the guy. He's about my age. I'm 45. He might be a little older actually. And he was uh, kind of the first really big skateboarder, I think, in the 80s, 1980s. Get a little little drink here. Hydrate. Ah, Better. Let's see here. Looking for some more questions. Oh, okay. Maria, how are you? Hey, there will be a members chat on the Discord channel tomorrow, 9 o'clock. Maria's in there almost all the time. I think Mega said uh, she was busy last week. I was busy last week too. Um, But there usually is a members chat on the Discord server once a week. Practice your speaking if you would like to become a member. Hey, Brent. Question. What would be the difference between to steam up, oh, to fog up, referring to glass? 
Yet yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Those are both very common. So I am wearing glasses right now. I hope there isn't a glare. If there is a glare, that means there's something bright in my sun and in my glasses because of the lights. But sometimes if I'm wearing glasses outside, I usually only wear them to read. Uh, they might fog up or they might steam up, which means you, you can't see through them. They mean the same thing. A lot of times when you're sitting in a car and you're just waiting, you know, the windows might fog up or they might steam up actually in that way. Good question. I would not say steam up. Let me, I'm thinking now steam up. We often use only in the bathroom. Actually, when you're taking a shower, Maria, great question. I know, I thought we used them the same way. We don't, I guess steam up your shower. Most people have a shower and a mirror in their bathroom. Yeah. The mirror, it, it steamed up because of your hot shower. If you're sitting in a car, we'd say fogged up. Hmm, good question. It's actually making me think today. English. It's so tough, right? I'm sure most languages have those little differences there. So they, they both mean pretty much the same, but I think we do use them slightly different ways. Steam up, bathroom, fog up, pretty much anywhere else. Yeah. The steam from the water, that's what, that's what we call it. When the, when the water is warm, you can see steam coming off. Maybe I need to make a video on that. Maybe put that uh, as a short on the other channel because it's, it's not as easy as I thought. Maria, thank you. Thank you. Amina is here. Amina is here. Amina dropped a super chat before we got started. Thank you so much for that super chat. What do I have? I got, I got to do this for, for her. I think I have a little super chat thing here. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah. So nice. Amina. you don't have to do it, but it's always so nice. Um, I'm going to have a, a website pretty soon. Um, just to, um, steer people in the direction of, uh, and that's going to help out. Thank you so much. Famous scene from the Titanic. Hey, I think Jamie's here. Yeah. That's when, um, what's her name? Rose and Jack, like there's enough room on that door right? There's enough room on the door. He could have just like got on there with her. All right. Um, I think, I don't know how this microphone is going to work, but we do have a, we do have a puppy coming in. Jamie's coming in right now. All right. You want to, we only, we only have one microphone though. Uh oh, she's leaving for some reason. And then she left. We have, uh Oh, some, I don't know what's more important than this live chat, but something at probably something with the kids. Aroni is here. Aroni has a YouTube channel that he teaches English on. Can you hear the, can you hear the door that was left open? There's a, uh, we have a, a dehumidifier running. Hang on just a second. She must have had a very important phone call. It seems like she's on the, uh, on the phone. What's more important than this live stream though? Come on. Come on. All right, Angelo. Hey, yeah, it's been a while since uh, uh, I've talked to Angelo. So I don't, Ario, I don't know what Harvest Moon is. I don't, crying. I'm sorry, Ario. I don't know what Harvest Moon is. Is it a book? Um, Mio says that she enjoys watching the Olympics every day. I try to catch up with the Olympics at night when you catch up means you might have missed something, but then you try to get all of the information later. So maybe you're not on this live stream right now. Maybe you're watching it on replay. Maybe you're catching up with it on replay. Oh, Amina has to go already. But again, Amina, thank you so much for the super chat revealed. We, how are you? We lives in New York, not too far from me. All right. I see a couple other questions too. Good. 
We got this. We got this, Patty. I see you. And uh, Conlin, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Be right there. So revealed. Revealed. It means something was secret and now you can see it or now you know it. So let's talk about Hank. If you haven't, oh, he's coming. So in a second, we are going to reveal our new puppy. So maybe you haven't seen him before, but you will suddenly see him now. I think he's ready. Or at least Jamie's ready to bring him over. Who knows what's going to happen? In English, we say never work with children or animals. And we'll see what happens here. I got to move over. All right, there's. Can you say hello? I don't know why the camera is. Oh, it's right at the top. Oh, yeah. Just right at the top there. There he is. Say hi. You see yourself? <laughs> so there's Hank. On. Yeah, do you want to say? I, I've been talking the whole time. That some people have been asking about you. So um, if you want to get on, I'll back off here. Hi, everyone. Long time no see. Um, we were supposed to go to a birthday party today, but that's what just happened. It just got canceled. Oh. So. Why did you cancel? Um, he woke up sick. Our nephew woke up sick. That's who we were celebrating today. So that's why I couldn't come on as I was getting the phone call that it was canceled. So, oh. yeah. Sick with COVID? No. I don't okay. think you're supposed to say that word. Oh, I just got demonetized. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear us okay? Yeah. The The great thing about this microphone, thank you. If you're a channel member, you helped. Uh, you help, Oh, my gosh. I missed some. I missed some. Some super stickers. And so and we got a new channel member. Hang on. Oh, We're, nice. Hey, new channel member. Well, is it because of Hank? Is it because of Hank? Oh, goodness. Yeah, Hank is a frog. So let me just put this here. Boom. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. All right, that, and then thank you, Yawin, for the super chat. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. All right, if, if it's because of Hank, Hank will come on every time. Yeah, channel <laughs> members. And uh, there, is a, uh, there is a video about Hank uh, for channel members. So, want to take a couple of questions, Jamie? Yes, I don't have my glasses on. So. Okay, luckily I have Actually, my glasses. Pretty What's big that? today. Yeah, luckily. Chat. Um, no, so Luciano, um, is already making fun of me <laughs> that my, uh, my wife is out of my league. That is correct. That is correct. So if you look at me, you know, not, not anything to brag about, not a great looking mm -hmm. guy, but then, uh, you know, Jamie, she, she's, uh, she's, she's better looking than I am. That's what we talk about. Yeah. Angelo says Brent has dog allergies. That is correct. That is correct. The good, is this even working anymore? Can you hear me? I can hear myself a little bit. The good thing about um, Hank is that he doesn't shed. So his his fur doesn't get on our clothing more than my hair. My hair is falling out. But my hair or Hank's hair is about the same. So I haven't noticed that I've been uh, any more allergic than usual. So, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, now Yawin. Didn't have to do that again, but thank you so much. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. That is very nice. Yawin, actually, um, I made a video with Yawin. Uh, she gave me a bunch of information about what happens in Taiwan, and I compared it to what happens here in the United States. Let's see. Oh. Lots of, lots of, uh, mm. lots of love for Hank. Thank you. Lots of love for Hank. He is adorable. All right. Um, the, so, uh, so Patty, um, maybe Jamie can answer this, but, um, when we talk about dogs, we talk about their breed, their breed. So it's really close to brand. It's a, the dog's breed. And so Jamie will talk a little bit about breed. Um, I don't know how it works in other languages though, but. Jamie's going to talk a little bit about the dog's breed, about Hank's breed. Yeah. So um, Hank is a first generation, what we call a frug, F-R-U-G. Um, so he is, his dad was a French bulldog. 
which is a relatively small dog, and his mother was a pug. Um, so he's a frog. They just put those two together. Um, she, he was the first breed that the breeder had had done, um, and he's I can't see the microphone's oh, right away. There we go. I'll put him over here. <laughs> he is not going to get very big. He might get up to fifteen pounds. Um, but we, we plan on feeding him correctly so that he doesn't, you know, get overweight and things like that. Um, so yeah, he's a frog. Breezy. Breezy there. Oh, hey, Breezy. Angelo. Hey, thank you so much. This is for you. Hey, thank you so much for the super chat. Cutter. Cutter is getting big. They're going to be hosting the uh, World Cup. Oh, nice. We've watched a lot of soccer in our house a, a lot. lot. And now Cutter has Super Chats. So that's awesome. Nice. Um, yeah, Ario. Yeah, sorry. I forgot about the uh, the game, Harvest Moon. I did forget about that. Adriana from Poland was wondering, how old is that puppy? So he turned eight weeks on Wednesday. And here in America... The breeder is not allowed to turn the puppy over to the owners until they are eight weeks old. Um, they can't be taken away from their mothers until then. So we got him right when he turned eight weeks. Yeah. So he's a little over eight weeks. <laughs> You're welcome, Patty. All right. Let's see. Any more dog? Dog chat. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, is it Hamza? I've I've had uh, I've had students named Hamza before, so yeah. Make sure you check the members tab, and then you can see the uh, the Discord, and then join us tomorrow for the uh, the uh, the chat. Oh man! I, I nice to it. see you, Ibrahim. Omega, thank you so much. This is for you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. That is very generous, Hank. What's up, buddy? I think he might be tired. Is he just waking up or did he? Um, well, he had a nap and then he played quite a bit outside and then he's probably getting ready to go to sleep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's when I like Hank the best, when he's about to go to sleep and he will uh, cuddle. When anytime somebody, like he's cuddling with Jamie right now, <laughs> getting close. You know, he's a good puppy. He's a good puppy. He's a very good puppy. So far. Yeah. Uh, see. Brent. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice, but uh, they got it's their dog. I just live here. Aroni, uh, don't let him fool you. He really likes him. I, I'll tell you a quick story. Me and the kids have been laughing about this. So the other day, I went and got his food for dinner, and Hank was with me. The first person down to the garage was Brent. He usually comes to the garage to see if he, he can help and do anything, but he didn't go for the food. He came to get Hank out of the car to see Hank. Yeah, he, I, I just wanted to make sure that you had enough hands that you didn't have to get the groceries and the dog. The dog was just lighter. He was just lighter. Hank was just lighter. Um, yeah, so maybe, yeah, with the dog breeds, Angelo, it's a little bit tough. He is part pug and he's part French bulldog. So I'm sure in France, they don't call it a French bulldog, but that's what we call it in, in English. So, yeah, I have I have talked about pets. Um, I do have a, a quick video on the names of baby animals in English. So baby dogs, we call them puppies, puppies. Yeah, he. He is really, really calm. Now, when he wakes up from this nap, he will not be calm. He, We call them in uh, America, dogs get what we call zoomies, um, where they zoom back and forth at the around the house once they wake up, just smelling everybody. He just goes crazy. Um, he's good for about an hour, and then he goes back to sleep. So this is really a breed that's... Um, we call it a lap dog. So he's not going to be like a dog that's going to play fetch a lot or things like that. He'll lay with us and snuggle. So he's going to be a lap dog. Yeah. And, and your lap is when you sit down and it's that place where like a baby could sit or a child could sit their lap. So um, Hank is not in Jamie's lap right now. He's 
probably would say on her chest, but if he was a little lower, he would just hang out on your lap. Um, if you want to know um, a really big English word, it's brachiocephalic, brachiocephalic. And that that's what it means. His nose is pushed in. So he will sometimes snort and grunt. French bulldogs do that. Uh, pugs do that. They don't breathe really well. So he is never going to be that crazy. He was built for sitting in someone's lap pretty much. He was bred to, I don't even know what this means. He was bred to be someone's, um, what is, oh, okay, okay. That is great. I know exactly what that means in English, but we do not have that term in English. But I like that. I really, really like that. <laughs> yeah, I would say um, that we're probably co-heads of the family. Co meaning we work together, like ideally, ideally. Hey, yeah, um, Bob the Canadian has a dog, Hank the American, Oscar the Canadian. Hey, um, I don't know who would be the winner if um, Hank is so small, I think. But Oscar looks really gentle, so I don't think he would, I don't think he would bother. I think they would be really good friends. Um, Oscar the Canadian does have an Instagram, and uh, we call him Hank the Tank. He does have an Instagram if you want to – Check it out. Is it Hank the Tank? No, what? it's Frog Life with Hank. Okay. Frog Life with Hank. All right. I would, uh, Luciana, why don't you take a trip to JFK Space Center with your family? Show us the museum. Yeah, I would love that. I would love that. Is that the JFK? That's in Florida, I think, right? The JFK sure. one is in Florida. If I had more time in Washington, D.C., I would have liked to go, have gone to the Smithsonian's. There is an air and space museum there. We've been many times. It's amazing. It's amazing. All right. Uh, Maria, is Hank's breed one of those that don't get too big when they grow up? Yes. Let's see. You said uh, 15 pounds, right? Yeah. So he's he is going to get okay, bigger so than this. How many kilograms is 15 pounds? But he will, um, he'll grow taller, but he's not going to weigh too, too much more than what he does now. Uh, I think that ha is how people uh, measure, like we say pounds, but uh, about seven, seven kilos. I think he'll, he'll be, he'll be pretty small. He'll be pretty small. Okay. Yeah. He looks like he's uh, going to sleep. I think so. Yes. Pugs known for sleeping. He does like to sleep. He's been very, very good at night. We were crate training him, so he sleeps in a crate at night. Um, he cries very, very little when he first goes in. He has a little bear that smells like his mother um, that the breeder gave to us, and um, and he does very, very well. All right, the last baby of a family always has hairs, huh? I don't know what that always has the hair. Well, he definitely is the, the baby. And uh, I think in, in the United States, we might say he's going to be spoiled. So everyone will be uh, looking after him. It's a phrasal verb there. Uh, everybody will be um, giving him a lot of attention. Maybe we'll say that. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? No, let's see. Um, have you ever heard the phrase put 11 men behind the ball? No, I have not. I have not. And I'm not sure if that refers to American football or soccer, but I have not heard that one. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, Ario, I wish that uh, Mr. Bob and I could get together. Where we went in northern Canada, it actually, or northern Maine, really close to the Canadian border. It's actually still really far from Bob the Canadian. He probably lives six, seven, eight hours from where we were. Wow. Canada is so big, so big. Yeah, Breezy, definitely want to go to a museum. And most museums will let you film, but not all of them, not all of them. 
All right. What do you say? We should wrap it up and get Hank, get <laughs> Hank in his bed. But thank you so much. Thank you to all the new members. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you so much for your questions. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, I will be on English Arts Academy with Karis tomorrow about this time. I think uh, like maybe one hour later. But I did leave a link in the description. Check that out. Anya, thank you so much. Thank you so much thank to all you, the channel members. Aroni for holding down the fort, making sure uh, everyone gave great comments. No spamming. Thank you. It's It's the best audience ever. Thank you so much. We never get any spam. So thank you all for being so awesome. Mega, thank you. Yawen, thank you for your super chat. Angelo, thank you for the super chat. Amina, thank you so much for the super chat. And thank you all. Thank you all. We will see you later. Bye. Adios, amigos.